It occurred to me recently that most of the movies we've done for you have involved wiring in some form or another. And at no point have we really looked at the subject of wiring, so today I thought that's uh, what we'd do. Wiring is one of those techniques that gets us the badge of tree torturers. And obviously wiring is not harmful to a tree, because if it was, it would be counterproductive. Wiring is a very useful technique for speeding the development of bonsai. It enables us, particularly with things like conifers, uh, pines and junipers and so on, to develop bonsai very quickly. The basis of wiring a bonsai is the fact that we take a suitable gauge of wire, we wrap it around the branches, that enables us to bend the branch and move it into the position that we want that's harmonious to the design that we want to create. Wiring bonsai is something many people hate to do. Uh, they consider it boring, dull, time-consuming, but to me it's such an integral part of creating bonsai trees, particularly from Yamadori and with conifers, that uh, if I felt that way about it, I'd probably go and find something else to do. When it comes to wiring, we've got two primary choices in terms of the wire that we use. The first one is copper. That tends to come on these large rolls, uh, and copper is my own personal preference for wiring, but it does require a little bit more skill uh, and attention to detail to get the best out of it. But copper allows you to bend the branch with a much thinner wire than you would with aluminium and therefore it looks much better. Uh, it's acceptable for trees that are going to exhibition as well, whereas aluminium definitely is not. So your second choice and the most common and by far the most popular is aluminium. This comes in these small diameter rolls. It's generally coloured brown, just for aesthetic reasons uh, and it comes in a variety of sizes and uh, this is what I'm going to be using today to show you the basics of these wiring techniques. Tools for wiring are very simple and involve a basic wire cutter something like this, this is a fairly heavy duty one obviously uh, and the one that I particularly like is this small pair of, uh, it's a scissor style tool, uh, very powerful jaws here and very suitable for cutting sort of up to mid-sized wires, two, three millimeters, something like that. And because it's on a nice long handle, it enables us to get right inside the tree and cut very accurately without the, uh, the bulk of the bigger one. And finally, we have a pair of wire pliers. These are uh, a very thin nose plier with the jaws at a slight angle. That enables us to finish the wire at the end uh, and to bend it and finish it up nice and neatly. The first rule of wiring is to do with the thickness or the caliper of the wire that we're going to apply to a branch. And simply put, the wire should be a third of the thickness of the branch. For instance, it would be no good trying to use this wire with a branch like this because it's the same thickness. What tends to happen is, because the wire is so thick, we tend to try and wrap it around the branch, but what tends to happen is we wrap the branch around the wire and that obviously creates lots of damage. So rule number one, the wire should be one third of the thickness of the branch. The second rule in wiring bonsai is that one wire does two branches. And simply put, what happens is we take a fork in a branch like so, and we put the wire onto the fork and then we go over and into the middle and then back and into the middle and then that wire continues along the branch and what that actually does is locks these branches and this wire together which enables us to bend one branch without bending the other or without the other moving so that we can uh, we can hold those in position accurately that's the basis of all of the wiring technique that we use in bonsai for the purposes of this demonstration, I've brought this Mugo Pine along, uh, which we're going to be wiring for you today and showing you uh, some basic simple techniques. And also how wiring can begin to improve uh, raw material and uh, begin to develop it as bonsai. This tree has obviously had a wiring in the past. Originally, these branches were way off over there somewhere. They've gradually been bent and pulled round. And as you can see, we've got the basics of some shape, but it's, uh, it's quite unruly. So this is the second wiring for this tree, but it's very suitable for uh, showing you the techniques that uh, we use in wiring. Wiring any bonsai, we begin with the thick wires first and then we work towards the thinner and thinner wires. Here you can see I've put on the first big wire. And at this point, you can see that fork that I described earlier. And here you can see the practical application. Take the piece of wire that's about one and a half times the length of the branch you want to wire. You take the first coil and put that in place. And then the second coil comes through like this, just the way that I shoot you on my finger. And then using about a 45 degree coil spacing, we work that along 
the length of the branch and as you can see I'm moving this end and the other end is not moving about so it's not damaging the foliage as I'm completing this wire. Work carefully between the branches because it's very easy to break some of the small branches and also we don't want to trap any uh, needles underneath the wire. As the branch becomes thinner towards the end your coil spacing can gradually increase its uh, angle anything up to sort of 60 degrees something like that. At this point you can see we're working right at the end of this branch it's got very dense it's got uh, very small and the last coil goes underneath and then finishes facing upwards and then we can just remove that end and then go to complete the second one. You can check that you've got the right diameter wire very easily by just taking the branch and bending it. If it stays where we leave it, then the wire is thick enough. If it springs back, it's not thick enough, remove it and rewire it using something thicker. For the final wire, the very thinnest ones, we use exactly the same technique of wiring two branches together. We wire up to the green and no further and to finish that wire we come along you can see that's just gone slightly beyond the needles we bring that end backwards always facing upwards and then we can prune that away the reason we leave that facing upwards is that at the end we want to turn the foliage up so we can just grab that little piece there and just turn that up towards the light and that holds that nice and securely here you can see we've got one odd branch. It's not possible to link this to another branch of the same thickness. So in that instance, what we actually do is run the wire forwards. Most people would run it from the back of the branch and then out. But it doesn't lock in place very effectively. So to begin with, we take the end of the wire and bring that forwards. And then over and onto the branch. Nice and close at the base. And as you can see there, we've now created that fork that I show you at the beginning. In this position we've got two wires separated uh, along the bigger branch by a bigger wire in between. And for this we're going to use a wire suitable for the largest one, uh, which will be fractionally too big for the uh, thinner one, but we can wire these as a pair. And the way that we achieve that is to follow along in the same direction as the thicker wire, like so, and then from the outside of the branch the wire hooks inside and then the same with the upper one once that one's hooked in place we can then complete this one and then gently move and then gently move that out of the way so we can get to this one. Now this position you can see this fork. What's very important here is that we complete the thicker branch and then we make one full turn into that fork then remove that end so we can now use a thinner wire to complete this. Next we use a thinner wire, lay it parallel to the thicker one and hook the first one into place and complete the second one. And here you can see now these two wires are locked nicely into place and the only place we've got any doubling up on this branch is this one little junction here and it allows us to step the size of the wire down to be suitable for the branch. If we were to carry this wire on 
along here uh, by the time we got halfway along this branch it would be much too thick and would cause us problems so this is how we step the wire down at each individual fork Every time we come to a fork like this, where the branches then become smaller, we use this technique to reduce the size of the wire neatly. This enables us to have as little wire on the tree as possible to do the job. Here I've got two branches, again on this fork, to deal with, and this requires a fairly large wire because these are very stiff. The principle of the wiring holds the same as, uh, as we've shown you, but one of the things people, a lot of people would have problems bending this thick wire. The secret of this involves cutting the wire longer than we actually need and then using this piece as a lever to bend the wire around the branch but at the same time we have to be careful not to apply pressure with the wire to the branch because it could very easily break the bark. So using this little extra length of wire as a lever makes it very simple to bend this heavy gauge material. I completed the work on this tree. The wiring has taken about an hour and it's taken me about 20 minutes to uh, place all the branches and as you can see the image of this tree is considerably improved. One of the questions I'm invariably asked about wiring is how long it stays on the tree. Well the simple answer to that is as long as possible. If we remove it too soon then obviously the branches are going to spring back to their original position. If we leave it too long it'll cut into the bark and cause damage to the branches. So just as you begin to see that wire tighten onto the branch as the branch swells you then just cut the wire away and remove it but the fact that one area is digging in doesn't mean to say that you have to remove it all at once so just piecemeal little by little you can then remove the wire